Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Great Graphic Novels, Graphic Novel Book Buzz, Part 1. I'm Sarah Hunter, editor for Graphic Novels and Books for Youth at Booklist. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. Links to today's slide presentation and title list were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom one hour ago. To download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the links located there. <clears throat> You can also download the slides and title list by copying the URLs on this screen to your web browser. If you have any trouble accessing these materials, please contact us at webinars at booklistonline.com. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a button for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions I'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Booklist offers closed captioning on all webinars. To enable or disable captions on your screen, please look for and click the captions icon on the toolbar mentioned earlier. From there, you can select show or hide captions from the menu that appear. If you choose to enable subtitles, you can adjust the size of the captions at any time by selecting caption settings. And finally, Booklist expects all participants to maintain an atmosphere of respect and fairness. Anyone who violates the standard of behavior, including engaging in any form of harassment, may at the discretion of the organizers. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Kaylee Flagg, Children's Library Marketing Associate at Simon & Schuster, Evan Monday, Publicity Manager, and Julia Wichter, Social Media Coordinator, both at Tundra Books, an infant of Penguin Random House Canada, Calista Gonzalez, Marketing and Publicity Coordinator of the Yen Press imprint, Eyes Press, Harry Borzumato Greenberg, Vice President, Marketing and Publicity at Holiday House, Peach Tree, Pixel and Ink, and Jeffrey Lapid, Sales and Marketing Specialist, and Kurt Nelson, Director of Sales School at Peer. First, we'll hear from Kaylee Blake. Kaylee is a Children's Library Marketing Associate on the Education and Library Team at Simon Schuster. For all four years of middle school, she won most books checked out at the library, so you could say her career is the ultimate expression of her childhood ambition. When she's not reading, she is usually running in Central Park, attempting a new recipe, or following random dogs down the street. Take it away, Kaylee. Hi, everybody. My name is Kaylee. Thank you so much for joining us today for Simon & Schuster's portion of the graphic novel webinar, and thank you so much to Booklist for having me. And you'll also see our email down there. So if you have any follow up questions or are interested in further discussion, please feel free to reach out. Next slide. So firstly, I want to talk about our graphic novel series adaptations. So here we have some of our most beloved graphic novel series that may be even better, or some of our most beloved middle grade series that may be even better as graphic novels. They're the same great stories you know, just accompanied by gorgeous art. After pulling a magical thunderbolt from a stone, 10-year-old Zeus goes on the adventure of a lifetime in this first installment of the Heroes in Training series. Armed with his trusty thunderbolt, Zeus is on a quest to rescue his fellow Olympians from the evil Cronus and a journey to fulfill his destiny as king of the gods. And our beloved Goddess Girl series is now available as a graphic novel as well, and this first book sees Athena take the stage. When she's whisked away to Mount Olympus Academy, Athena worries about fitting in and dealing with her dad, Zeus. Luckily, she meets the goddess girls and finds the best friends she's ever had. Many of you may be familiar with our Cupcake Diaries series, and this great graphic novel version tells the classic story of the formation of the Cupcake Club and the development of the sweet middle school friend group we all know and love. And lastly, we have Creepover, Truth or Dare. During a round of Truth or Dare, Abby Miller confesses her crush on Jake Chilson. The only people who know her secret are her friends at the sleepover and whoever sent her text message in the middle of the night warning her to stay away from Jake or else. Soon, some very creepy things start happening. Someone definitely wants to keep Abby away from Jake. Is it a jealous classmate? Or as Abby begins to suspect, could it be a ghost? Next slide. Now I'll introduce some of our little Simon titles, perfect for younger readers who are just getting into graphic novels. The Arcade World series is an engaging chapter book graphic novel series that follows three friends who use their gaming know-how to protect their town from video games that have come to life. Books five and six, shown here, feature the friends taking on a new and dangerous foes, including a dragon they must become knights to defeat. Next slide. 
And here we have our fantastic Guardians of Horsa series. This thrilling and unique graphic novel chapter book series gives Avatar, The Last Airbender, an equine twist when one special horse must unite the four herds of magical horses, each with a different elemental ability, and usher in a new era. Next slide. In the Dragon Kingdom of Renly series follows a scarlet dragon named Bruskin as he navigates magical quests, epic adventures, mysterious prophecies, and of course, all the dragons young readers could want. Next slide. Our most recent installment in the hilarious Super Turbo series sees Super Turbo, Sunnyview Elementary's crime-fighting hamster, battle a water fountain that just won't turn off. Next slide. These ready-to-read graphics are perfect for emerging readers who want to ease into both novels and graphic novels. In the second level one ready-to-read graphics book about a mouse named Figgy and a rat named Boone, the friends discover a big wheel of cheese. They try to push up the hill to their house and they work together, but it keeps rolling down the hill. Then they get an idea to use teamwork and sharing to save the day. Worm and Caterpillar Are Friends is a heartwarming and affirming level one ready-to-read graphics that celebrates the beauty of true friendship. Worm loves how they and Caterpillar are just alike, but Caterpillar has a feeling there's a big change coming. Then Caterpillar disappears for a while and comes back as Butterfly. Can Butterfly and Worm still be best friends? And lastly, a chicken and a penguin with seemingly nothing in common see if they can be birds of a feather in the first book in this sweet new level one ready to read graphics about celebrating differences. Next slide. We have even more ready to read graphics. In There Might Be a Kazoo Emergency, a very prepared boy might have to break out his emergency kazoo in this zany level two ready to read graphics novel from the author of Flamingo Bingo and Toucan with Two Cans. In this next delightfully witchy, slightly spooky series, witches, pets, sticks, and scones chase down a crystal ball in the second book in the Sticks and Scones level two ready to read series. And finally, Judge Kim presides over a case against her beloved pet dog in this second book in her series. Next slide. And now I'd like to tell you about some of our middle grade graphic novels. We have a ton of great ones this year. The second book in the New York Times bestselling Spy School series continues in graphic novel form as aspiring spy Ben Ripley must spend his summer in top secret training and is thrown back into danger. And next up, Hilda and the Troll meets the OK Witch in Wizkit, a delightfully whimsical middle grade graphic novel about a magical cyclops cat on her first trip away from home who learns even the most ordinary journeys can be magical with the right company. Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends is a great comp to Misfit Mansion, a spooky and sweet middle grade graphic novel about a monster girl who sneaks out of her foster home and into a human town in search of a forever family, but finds more than she bargains for. And next, Awkward by Svetlana Chmakova meets the High Low series in the second book in an action-packed sort of super middle grade graphic novel series that follows superhero Wyatt and his sidekicks on an undercover mission to summer camp. Next slide. We have even more exciting, exciting middle grades. A small bat blown off course makes the perilous journey home with new friends in the adventurous middle grade odyssey from award-winning author Kenneth Oppel the best-selling Silverwing is now available in graphic novel format. To know Barb the Berserker is to love her, and this latest book is no exception. The action of Moana meets the humor of books like Dogman in this explosive and uproariously funny third book following Barb and her friends as they face off against the Witch's Head Shadow Army. In Jewel, a gorgeously illustrated debut by a husband and wife team, a rivalry between two sisters culminates in a fencing duel. This funny and emotional debut graphic novel is sure to appeal to readers of Raina Tugmeyer and Shannon Hale. And lastly, from Be Brett Baer, New York Times bestselling author, Fox News chief political anchor, and host of Special Report with Brett Baer, comes the first book in a thrilling new time-bending graphic novel series about kids who use their love of history to thwart an evil time traveler's scheme to change the past. Perfect for fans of Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales. Next slide. Now I'd like to talk about our beloved Dork Diary series, which many of you have probably heard of. This New York Times best-selling middle grade series follows Nikki Maxwell as she chronicles her life through text and art, her move to a new school, her battles with Queen Bee McKenzie, 
and her zany adventures with BFFs Chloe and Zoe by her side. Next slide. Here's the rest of the Dork series. And next slide. For the most exciting news of all, we have more Dork coming this fall. This new title, the 15th in the series, sees Nikki and her friends attempt a trip to Paris. Will they make it and have a successful vacation, or will typical dork misadventures get in their way? Next slide. And for some more exciting middle grade news, the first book in the New York Times and USA Today, Today bestselling Keeper of the Lost City series is being reimagined as a graphic novel, with the first half of this epic novel adapted to this new format with beautiful artwork, and we have even more coming. Next slide. Finally, I'll share some of our great teen graphic novels. Our Flag Means Death gets a magical sapphic twist in The Pirate and the Porcelain Girl, a swashbuckling young adult graphic novel full of high stakes adventure, fantastical creatures, and swoony enemies to lovers romance, perfect for fans of In Deeper Waters and The Prince and the Dressmaker. Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me meets all of the Y2K vibes in Mall Goth, a coming of age young adult graphic novel from acclaimed comic artist Kate Leth about a 2000s goth teen whose favorite part of her new town is the mall. And finally, one of our most unique titles this year, a spirited young prince longing to learn more about the world grows into a man on a quest to find the cause of human suffering in Enlightened, a first of its kind graphic novel retelling of the life of Siddhartha, the founder of Buddhism. And next slide. That is all for me today. Sorry, I thought I had a finale slide in there. Oh, but that's all for me. Thank you so much for listening. And please feel free to reach out to our email or social media or anything if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kaylee. Now we'll hear from Evan Monday and Julia Wood. Evan is publicity manager at Tundra Books, an imprint of Penguin Random House Canada. Formerly, he worked <clears throat> as a publicist at Coach House Books and festival director of The Word on the Street. He is also the author and illustrator of a series of novels for young adults, The Dead Kid Detective Agency from ECW Press. He once auditioned for Jeopardy, was, but was deemed too dull for television. Julia is the social media coordinator at Tundra. She is a YA rom-com enthusiast and loves playing cozy video games chaotically online. As, she, as a child, she appeared on TVO Kids and was in fact not too dull for television. Thank you for being here today, Evan and Julia. Thank you. Hello, my name is Evan. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm still thinking about the Cyclops cat. Hi, my name is Julia Wigdor, and I use she, her pronouns. And lucky you, you get to hear us talk about my favorite medium, graphic novels, and the amazing titles we have in this category for young readers. Let's dive in, starting with something aquatic. Next. Ahoy readers, our first graphic novel series truly needs no introduction. Head under the sea with Narwhal and Jelly by Ben Clanton. Narwhal is a happy-go-lucky narwhal. Jelly is a no-nonsense jellyfish. The two might not have a lot in com common, but they do love waffles, parties, and adventures. Next slide. Currently at eight books in the series, Narwhal and Jelly is targeted for readers aged six to nine and is available in many formats, including box sets and a new bind up of books one and two called the Super, Potty, Super Pod Party Pack, <laughs> available September 5th. For younger readers, we have Bubbles and Blanky. These Narwhal and Jelly board books are the perfect introduction to these silly characters for littles aged zero to three. Next slide. And the latest book in this popular series, in stores as of last week and plenty of time for spooky season, is a super scary Narwhaloween. Narwhal and Jelly celebrate Halloween in the eighth book in the series. Narwhal, like myself, loves Halloween. Narwhal loves dressing up in costume, but Jelly isn't dressing up. He's maybe even a little scared of this time of year. Can his buddy Narwhal help him enjoy spooky season? Plus, for scaredy cats, it's even got a glow-in-the-dark cover. Next. And Narwhal's School of Awesomeness, the sixth book in the series and a perfect back to school present for both students and teachers is now available on paperback. This is the early readers graphic novel due that all others, Pizza and Taco, Shark and Bot, Hall and Oats, maybe not that one, compare themselves to. Next. If you're looking for a way to entertain kids, we have a gallon of downloadable activities available as well as a poster of the Narwhalicorn dance from book seven, learn it, bring it to the club, you can request posters from us while quantities last and activities are available on our site. Next. 
Next, we have a new super duo, Simon and Chester, based on the titular character from the best-selling picture book, Sir Simon Super Scare by Kale Atkinson. Simon and Chester are totally normal best friends, except that Simon is a ghost. Next, please. With Kale Atkinson's impressive illustrations, it's no wonder that Kirkus calls the latest book Super Family, an abnormally good read and a winner for new readers in a starred review. Next. Follow Simon and Chester's hilarious exploits in this not-to-be-missed early graphic novel series for ages six to nine, with three books already on shelves and many more on the way. Next slide. Um, Simon and Chester activity sheets can be found on our website, and these spooktastic sticker sheets can be requested while quantities last. Next, please. So duos are great, but you've heard it here first. Trios are the new duos, and it all starts with this trio, Weenie featuring Frank and Bean. Author Maureen Fergus and illustrator Alexandra Bai first introduced readers to this hilarious dachshund, guinea pig, and cat, as well as their human Bob, in Mad About Meatloaf, and they continue the hijinks in The Pancake Problem. Next, please. Weenie the Dachshund is a pretty good dog, but all bets are off when it comes to the thing Weenie loves more than anything else in the world, food. And his animal friends always get dragged along in Weenie's scheme. Next. A kid's I indie next list pick. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Julia. I keep stepping over you. That's all good. A kid's indie next list pick. Uh, Weenie featuring Frank and Beans is a perfect graphic novel introduction for kids ages six to nine. Next, please. Sticker sheets featuring this goofy trio and their flapjack shenanigans are available for request while supplies last. And don't forget Weenie's number one rule, there's always room for more pancakes. Next, please. I did that when we practiced too. Um, so blasting off into our next book, 2023, welcome the hilarious and eye-popping new graphic novel series, Pluto Rocket, New in Town by Paul Gilligan. Paul may be familiar to some readers as the creator of the nationally syndicated Pooch Cafe comic strip. Next. This new series features Pluto Rocket, a friendly alien who, as soon as she lands on Earth, meets Joe Pidge, a streetwise pigeon who becomes her new best friend. Joe Pidge is not just a city bird, but also the stylish king of the neighborhood, and has enlisted in Pluto's secret mission to find out what life in the neighborhood is really like. Next. Kids will love Pluto's boundless curiosity and optimism and her dynamic with Joe. And that's something re reviewers have noticed too, the cooperation and optimism and friendship that's highlighted throughout the Madcap Adventures, Sly Comedy, and Bright Colors. Next piece. We know that young readers go through these books quickly, so I'd be happy to know that there are more Pluto Rocket books to come soon. And with the fun buttons we've created, readers can declare themselves either Team Pluto or Team Pidge. Just kidding, they're on the same team. Remember all the cooperation? Next slide, please. Uh, next up, join the Disgusting Critters, a hilarious illustrated nonfiction series about disgusting creatures that is perfect for beginning readers. Next, please. With 10 books in the series, kids will learn fun and silly facts from these animals, like a rat's tail is perfect for balancing and also picking noses. Next, please. Although silly and off the wall, the Disgusting Critters series contains factual information that will both amuse and teach at the same time. Next, please. Um, downloadable activity sheets and educator's guides are available on our website and printed activity sheets are available while supplies last. And I believe Evan just got booted out of the Zoom. So he's gonna walk over here <laughs> and read his next part of his uh, presentation. So something a little, can you? I think so. I okay. Like so something a little different from our other graphic novels and intended for older readers on this next slide, please. Uh, is Mario Brassard and Gerard Dubois' Who Owns the Clouds, which is intended for ages 12 and up. This book is a powerful and visually arresting fictional graphic tale of trauma, memory, and hope in the aftermath of war. Next slide. Mila, the protagonist of the book, has dreams where she and her family leave their bomb village, hoping to move on to better lives. But family has disappeared and the lines between past and present, real and unreal, keep blurring. The book looks at the effects of war from a personal and mental health perspective and speaks to a wide variety of contexts, including the Holocaust, the Spanish Civil War, and the wars in Bosnia and Kosovo, and has relevance to the current conflict in, the, or sorry, in Ukraine. Next slide. This is an affecting book and has been compared to masterpieces like Mouse. Locally, the Montreal Review of Books gave it a review that I love best. Who Owns the Clouds gives voice to the unspeakable, and when the clouds part, a view to hope. An educator's guide to accompany the book is available to download from the Tundra site. Next, please. 
Uh, and now is the moment that you've all been waiting for. It's prize time. Um, one lucky winner will take home a narwhal and jelly prize pack, including a tote bag, plushes, and a copy of the brand new A Super Scary Narwhaloween. To enter, please send us an email that you tuned into this webinar. And entries are open from right now until 11.59 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on July 25th. Next slide, please. Uh, thank you so much for listening. We love hearing from readers, librarians, booksellers, people of all kinds. So please reach out through any of these methods with your questions and your thoughts. Uh, thanks so much for listening and happy reading. Thanks. Thanks so much, Team Tundra. We'll now hear from Calista Gonzalez. Calista is the Marketing and Publicity Coordinator of Eyes Press, the Korean comic imprint of Yen Press. Calista has been a lifelong fan of manga, anime, Korean comics, and storytelling in general. She is a voracious reader who doesn't understand the concept of the two view by the time and is happy to work in a role that she can share her love of books with others, from fans to library workers. Thanks for being here today, Calista. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Calista Gonzalez, and I'm here representing Eyes Press, the Korean content dedicated imprint of Yen Press, bringing you your favorite Korean comics materialized. I'm really excited to be here with you today and talk with you about how Korean comics, also referred to as manhwa, are a rising star in the world of graphic novels and how these select titles will make readers book it to your local libraries. Next slide, please. Before we get into the titles, I just wanted to briefly mention that these print comics were originally released as web comics. Web comics are just digital comics that people tend to read on their computers and phones. While web comics have been around for decades now, they've become the most popular they've ever been thanks to Korean comics in particular. Next slide, please. Korean web comics are the fastest growing comic community in the world. As much as manga was the sensation of my generation of readers, it's become clear that Korean comics are the next step for our industry. Several web comic apps exist, such as Webtoon, Tapas, and Tapitoon, and they've gained millions of readers engaging with the comics hosted on digital platforms. Next slide, please. In recent years, Korean comics have been printed and released in the English-speaking world. They've quickly risen to become some of the best-selling graphic novels out there, according to outlets such as New York Times. One such title that you see here is Solar Leveling, which is currently the biggest Korean comic title out there and happily one of ours. Next slide, please. We have almost two dozen Korean comic titles available under our Yen Press and Eyes Press imprints combined. But today I'll be talking about a specific four titles under Eyes Press, two of which are available now and two which are upcoming. All of these titles will be available in print, physical format, English language, and unlike manga, which reads right to left, these titles are all read left to right. They are wonderful mediums for reluctant readers these days with their vibrant colors, visual storytelling, and character driven dialogue. Next slide, please. First up is The Boxer, one of the few sports manhwa out there. It currently has two volumes available with volume three releasing next week. It's for teens ages 13 and up due to the level of violence and language. Chapter one opens with a talented teenager named Bakeson who is perfectly aware that he's a prodigy and his confidence and ego clearly makes him arrogant and a bully. He attends a boxing gym with one of the trainers being Coach K, remember him. Then chapter two introduces the dark and gloomy Yu, who is coincidentally discovered by Coach K, as it turns out that Yu has a level of boxing talent that is almost inhuman. The third character introduced is NJ, who loves boxing despite not being particularly talented at it, and he's all about having the courage to stand up for what's right, the idealistic, what it means to be a boxer type. Next slide, please. Yu, Baekson, and NJ are all schoolmates, with Baekson being the bully, NJ being the bullied, and you being a neutral party, a shadow of sorts, until he gets involved with the other two, and Coach K soon leads him into the world of boxing. Now, this story is the type where, as the volumes continue, you can't tell who the main character is or who's a good guy and who's a bad guy. It's really engaging to see how each character interacts with each other and how they appear differently in others' eyes. Next slide, please. The creator, JH, excels at portraying drama and depth in his art. The flow of the fights captivates readers even in the static medium that is print. We all appreciate artistic reads that do something different. So if you want to read one of the most brilliant sports comics out there, I recommend checking out the action packed manhwa, The Boxer. Next slide, please. 
This title is a business proposal. It is rated older teen for ages 16 and up due to the language alone. It's also geared more towards older readers because it features adults working protagonists. It also has a live action Korean TV adaptation, which can currently be streamed on Netflix. Volume 1 is available now, and Volume 2 is coming out in August. Next slide, please. After being worked to the bone at her office job, getting friend-zoned by her longtime crush, and dealing with her family's debt hanging over her head, Carly's life seems to have hit rock bottom. Luckily, her rich heiress friend has a business proposal for her. Go on a blind date in her place, act like an overly flirtatious, flirtatious femme fatale, get the guy to dump her so her friends can freely wait for her destined partner, and in return, Hari will receive a hefty compensation. Hari readily agrees, but things grow complicated when it turns out that the other party is Hari's new CEO, and he's dead set on marrying whoever shows up to the date. Next slide, please. Hari's CEO was ready to marry anyone in order to get his pushy grandfather off his back. But after meeting Hari, who he thinks is, his, is the heiress friend, he becomes genuinely interested in the spunky, unpredictable persona she portrayed. Hari, on the other hand, thinks he must be a perverted psychopath for wanting to still marry her, despite how she acted. The romantic comedy continues as Hari avoids her CEO at work, even though he shouldn't be able to recognize her without her getup. But he eventually does figure out that she's not the girl he thought she was. Surprise, though, he still wants to marry her, so they make a deal. I won't go too much more into the rom-com because they'll get too spoilery. A business proposal features hilarious comedy, beautiful art, and side characters that you love and root for as much as the main duo. Definitely check it out if you're looking for a rom-com between adults. Next slide, please. Not So Wicked Stepmom. The so in the title is spelled like sewing because it's about a children's clothing designer who reincarnates as the evil stepmother of Snow White, like the fairy tale. It's rated teen, ages 13 and up, releasing in August, and great for fans for reincarnation and villainous stories such as Villains Are Destined to Die, if you already have that title in your library. Next slide, please. Unlike the Snow White fairy tale, all Her Majesty Abigail wants to do is dote on the adorable Princess Blanche and give her the happy childhood she deserves. The problem is, the previous Abigail, who the clothing designer is now inhabiting the body of, has garnered a reputation for being extremely jealous and materialistic, and to top it off, her smile is, unfortunately, the stuff of children's nightmares. This unique twist on Snow White features lots of comedy, cute artwork, and an adorable mother-daughter dynamic, as Queen Abigail works hard to convince her stepdaughter she's not so wicked after all. Here you can see a preview of a moment where Abigail has shown Blanche some pretty dress options. Blanche likes them both, but next slide, please. One glance at Blanche's bright smile causes Abigail to be unable to physically control herself at the cuteness, banging her fists into the wall, which can come off as quite scary, don't you think? There's also some drama involving Abigail's husband, Blanche's father, and you'll just have to pick up Not So Wicked Stepmom Volume 1 to find out more. Next slide, please. The last title for my presentation is Jungle Juice. It will be releasing in September and is an action sci-fi comic appropriate for teens ages 13 and up. Jungle Juice follows college student Su Chan, who is at the top of the food chain, so to speak. Popular, handsome, he has it all, but he has a secret. He has dragonfly wings on his back. That's because when he was younger, he used the discontinued bug spray called Jungle Juice when trying to kill a dragonfly. Unbeknownst to him, he inhaled dragonfly DNA, which merged with his own due to the effects of the spray. One day, while out with his crush, they're attacked by a deranged man with mantis arms. This is the first time Su Chan seen anyone else with insect parts. In order to save his crush, he ends up revealing his wings, changing his life forever. Just as he's about to give up on it all, he's approached by a beautiful girl with insect antenna on her head, who invites him to join an academy for people like them with insect DNA. If he graduates at the top of his class, he'll be given a drink called Cinderella, which can remove the insect DNA. It's reverse engineered from jungle juice and in limited quantities since the spray was discontinued. After he joins the academy, things aren't exactly smooth sailing as more violent individuals with full control of their insect abilities appear and threaten those in the academy. I unfortunately don't have a preview to show you today, the Jungle Juice features a unique art style with a sort of neon element that highlights the insect body parts wonderfully. The shine of the, a bug's exoskeleton, the translucent looks of the dragonfly wings, it's really beautiful. And a lot of thought was put into how in each individual fights in this action-packed comic since everyone has different insect abilities. 
you know, how to spider fight a roach, how to dragonfly fight a mantis. And since Jungle Juice takes place in a school setting, I like to compare it to X-Men and My Hero Academia to give you an idea of the general fan base. Jungle Juice is a personal favorite of mine due to the unique premise and awesome execution. Next slide, please. Those are the four titles I'd recommend you check out. Here are our socials with all of the titles presented today being under our Eyes Press imprint. Uh, there's my email for anyone who would like to reach out with any questions. Next slide, please. We at Yen Eyes Press are proud to be a market leader in bringing you Korean comics imprint. Please do check out some of the other Korean comics published by Yen Press, and thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Callista. We'll now hear from Terry Borsumato Greenberg. Terry is Vice President of Marketing and Publicity for Holiday House, Peachtree, and Pixel and Ink. She's worked in all aspects of children's marketing, and school and library is where she's most passionate. Terry has worked with many children's book luminaries over the years, including Maury Sundak, Gary Paulson, Patricia Riley Giff, and Jerry Pinkney. More recently, she has had the privilege of working with Nikki Grimes, Bill Hillenbrand, and the debut authors Kate Albus and Crystal Maldonado. When she's not working on and reading children's books, you can find Terry combing through genealogical records, researching her family history, and her immigrant relatives who came to America from Calabria. Thanks for being here today, Terry. Thank you so much, Sarah. Hello, everyone. I'm Terry Borsamato Greenberg from Holiday House, Peachtree and Pixel and Ink. And I am delighted to share with you some of our award-winning and upcoming graphic novels from the sister companies of Holiday House and our newest publisher, Pixel and Ink. Peachtree doesn't yet have um, graphic novels um, and Pixel and Ink is now three years old. As a reminder, Pixel and Ink is a series only publisher for ages three to 13. Before we jump into the upcoming list, I'd like to highlight two of our I Like to Read comics, which received Theodore Seuss Geisel citations at this year's ALA. We are so proud of the recognition bestowed on the inaugural I Like to Read comics list. Michael Emberley's I Did It won the 2023 Geisel Award. And Owl and Penguin by Vikram Madden is a Geisel honor. And before we jump ahead, each of these two titles have companion books published this year. Michael's is Let's Go and Vikram's is Owl and Penguin Best Day Ever. First up for new books is a YA graphic novel. Constellations is about a queer teen living in the margins who is determined to find their way ahead. The book published just a month ago and already has three starred reviews in Booklist, Publishers Weekly, and School Library Journal. Booklist calls it an excellent, illustriously lyrical approach to gender expansive identity and SLJ Loud's Constellation as a first purchase for all YA library collections. Set in 1980s Troy, New York, Constellations is from author artist Kate Glasheen, who has created a world where strong lines meet soft color and raw emotions meet deep thought. This is a story of hope, humor, and survival. Jenny Ho's The Lost Mitten and two-time Geisel honoree Paul Mizell's Boom are new additions to our I Like to Read comics. This young graphic novel series within the award-winning I Like to Read series launched just last year. Kirkus says about the series, the simple format allows beginner readers to remain focused on the text while enjoying splash pages, sound effects, and the small details that make the visual experience of a comic so much fun. Here we have some interior art for both books. Next, in the second installment of the hilarious I Like to Read comic series from Mirka Hokanen, which launched in January, Mossy and Tweed enjoy a perfect day by the pond with their friend, the wise old unicorn, who is really just a goat. Cozy Scandinavian illustrations, oodles of oopsies, and easy to read banter are sure to delight in this series for emerging readers. 
Kids will laugh themselves silly at Mossy and Tweet's slapstick adventures. Geisel medalist Ethan Long hits a home run with his expressive art and encouraging messages about teamwork, perseverance, and the value of just having fun. In his first book in this series, Within a Series, Hoggy Winnicorton's formal former ball hog has learned to be a team player and his friends think he's a real catch. But Hoggy feels more at home on the basketball court than he does on the baseball diamond. And in Hoggy at bat, he wants to hit the ball so flawlessly that it soars right over the fence. Instead, it's a swing and a miss. The book is not only perfect for early comics collections, but it's a great social emotional learning tool. It's market day. Everyone wants Mama Cat's magical desserts, but her kittens think she deserves a treat of her own. Will they find the perfect gift among the stalls? Coming in January 2024, this imaginative and inviting graphic novel returns readers to the delicious world of rising comic star Miranda Harmon's Spring Cakes, which Kirkus Review called a story where young Kitty and comic love, comics lovers will be right at home. With deep detail and a sweethearted sensibility, Market Day helps introduce children to the concepts of purchasing, money handling, and gift giving. From the talented author illustrator Chrissy Krebs and Margaret Ferguson books comes the first of two hilarious younger graphic novels about Bizzard and his friends. Bear was just an average bear until the day a tornado lodged an out of control wizard wand in his head. He now has the ability to grant wishes, something he wants no part of. He'd much rather spend his dice days dozing away. His friends give him a new name, Bizzard the Bear Wizard, and he reluctantly accepts his new magical powers and starts granting wishes to everyone in the forest. Coming in January 2024 is the second installment in the series, Bizzard and the Big Bunny Business. The Books for a Better Earth collection launched this year. These titles are designed to inspire children to become active, knowledgeable participants in caring for the planet they live on. Focusing on solutions to climate change challenges, these books look at how scientists, activists, and young leaders are working to safeguard Earth's future. The series includes STEM picture books all the way up to middle grade nonfiction. One of the books in the collection is a graphic novel for 10 to 14 year olds coming next month. In Team Trash, A Time Traveler's Guide to Sustainability, studious environmentalist Charlie is stuck with a science fair partner who seems like her opposite, complete opposite. Charlie wants to save the planet and all Oliver wants to do is doodle in his notebook. But when a mechanical mishap sends the two traveling back through time, they'll have to work as a team to return to the present day. In this sweeping educational adventure that transports readers across continents and centuries, Washington Post contributor Kate Wheeler, along with Trent Huntington, invites readers into the history of recycling and how students can reduce plastic waste. The fresh journal style graphic novel acknowledges the reality of plastic pollution while offering accessible activist solutions, playfully illustrated sustainability tips, and an optimistic look into how modern scientists are combating waste. You know Vikram Madden from his Geisel Honor winner, Owl and Penguin. He's now giving us a brand new fun character in the series launch of Zuni Tales. Here we have Zuni, the plucky pup, who's lost a shoe. Young readers are invited to come on and help with the rescue. It might be here or over there. Why don't we go and ask Bear? Join the fun with Zuni and his zoo crew. This is told in three full-length stories and two mini comics. Tails will be wagging for this fuzzy four-legged star. It's a perfect fit for read-alouds and newly independent readers. Journey into a land of magic and powerful girls in this feminist retelling of Indonesian folktales, lushly reimagined by debut graphic novelist Klar Angkasa. In this collection, a JLG gold standard selection, the girls are the ones with power. 
the power to fight evil, to protect others, and to grow as people. Because why should girls in folktales always need saving? What if they save themselves instead? Based on Clark's favorite childhood stories and general and gorgeously in illustrated with a dedicated color palette for each tale, this retelling is filled with spectacular landscapes, deep emotions, and a firm belief in the power of girls' stories. The second adventure in the delightfully creepy Frights from Feral series follows Freya and Monica through the mansion and down into the deep dark passages hidden below the haunted town. These two are determined to find out what's happening to the kids of Feral. If they aren't careful, they might become the town's next unsolved mystery. With vibrant art, clever humor, and heaps of unsolved mysteries, animator Mark Fearing, who you know as, whom you know as the illustrator of the Middle School Bite series, conjures a fearsome saga out of small town terrors. Last Exit of Feral in this innovative, inventive series is sure to scare young readers silly. And we know how much young readers love that. We are at book four in Pixel and Ink's highly acclaimed graphic, um, graphic novel series, Black Sand Beach. This is from Richard Fairgray, writer, artist, and colorist of graphic novels. As the kids struggle to rescue Andy from the darkness, more secrets from Black Sand Beach past and present are revealed in this next installment of the dark and creepy graphic novel series. The first book was named a Texas Little Maverick graphic novel reading list pick. Black Sand Beach is the perfect sinister series for fans of Gravity Falls, Rickety Stitch, and Fake Blood. Thank you all so much for joining us today. All of our titles are available on Edelweiss. Many are on NetGalley. So please request any you'd like to read in advance and feel free to reach out with any questions you may have. My email is on the screen there and visit us online for many more inspiring books from Holiday House, Peachtree and Pixel and Ink. Thank you. Thank you so much, Terry. Finally, we'll hear from Jeffrey Lapid and Kurt Nuff. Jeffrey is a publishing professional with over 10 years of experience working with comic books, graphic novels, and children's picture books. He lives in Los Angeles, California. Kurt brings Matt Cave 25 years of experience in selling comics, games, and collectibles to the mass market, specialty, and hobby channel. Close us out, Jeffrey and Kurt. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for uh, having us here today. Thank you for being here. Um, I'd like to give you just a quick uh, introduction to Mad Cave Studios. Um, we are an independent uh, publisher out of Miami, Florida, and uh, we've been in existence since uh, 2014. Um, back in 2021, we created a young adult imprint called Maverick. Uh, we'll be presenting a couple of books out of uh, our Maverick imprint today. And then last year, we purchased uh, paper cuts. So we added a, a young reader in, in middle grade. Uh, imprint uh, under the Mad Cave umbrella. Uh, with that, I'd like to get started with our first uh, title today. It's called Paper Planes. Paper Planes is one of our young adult titles. Uh, it is released under our Maverick imprint, and this is our seventh book under the, uh, the Maverick imprint for young adults. Uh, Paper Planes was created by two non-binary artists, uh, author Jenny Wood and illustrator uh, Dozer Draws. This book is a great coming of age story. Uh, it is simultaneously hopeful and kind of a sobering reminder that growing up sometimes means growing apart. The story focuses on themes of identity uh, and friendship. It draws on the personal experiences of the creators to present the life and experiences of a non-binary character. Uh, the author Wood said that this book allowed me to write my first non-binary character while I was coming out as, uh, as non-binary. Uh, Dozer Draws, the artist, added, as a non-binary creator, Paper Planes is what I would have loved to read during my teen years. I am more than happy that I could help in bringing this emotional and very personal story to life. Kirkus Reviews calls Paper Planes a queer coming-of-age story that embraces the mess and complexity of identity and relationships. Uh, Paper Planes has already won two awards this year. Uh, the first award was the Independent Publishers Book Award, or IPPI, Bronze Medal for Best Young Adult Fiction. 
and uh, also the Next Generation Indie Book Award for Best Young Adult Fiction. And Paper Planes will be releasing next month, uh, August 22nd. Next slide, please. Uh, the next book we want to present is Yag's The Cranovi Tales. This is a book that I first became aware of at ALA last year in Washington, D.C. Uh, the author is Ben Baltazar. Uh, he came up to our booth wearing a, an Irish driving cap and a bow tie and a big smile on his face. Um, he had this old backpack over his shoulder and he, he pulled out a, a, a dog-eared sketch pad that had a bunch of character drawings on it. Um, those sketches are what Yags has become. Uh, Art is an Eisner Award winner for his work on DC's Tiny Titans. He's also worked on many other DC titles like Superman, um, Harley Quinn, uh, The Green Lantern. Yags is a fun and imaginative, imaginative, imaginative book for uh, middle grade readers. Um, this book does release under the Paper Cuts imprint. Art also became a, an owner recently of a three-store chain of comic book stores called Ah Yeah Comics. Uh, he has a store in Chicago, New York, and also in Indiana. Uh, he is a tireless promoter of his work and comics in general. Um, he's always excited to show up and meet fans and promote his books at events. And I think the, uh, the closest comp that I would have to Yags would be uh, Jeff Smith's Bone. Um, if, if you're a fan of Bone, you'll, you'll love Yags. And if you appreciate Yags, uh, we also uh, have another uh, series from, from art called Gilbert, spelled with two L's, that's about a little merman prince. And that is uh, in stock right now with Simon & Schuster. Uh, we also have plans to release volume two of Yags. Uh, it'll be coming in August of next year. And if you go to papercuts.com right now, there are lesson plans that you can download for, uh, for this title. Yags releases in about three weeks. Next slide, please. Uh, the next title we have is Magical History Tour. This is a series of books uh, from Paper Cuts. Uh, this particular book is volume 13. It's uh, all about Marie Curie. And um, it is uh, included with this series of books are books uh, about the Vikings, uh, Albert Einstein, uh, there's a book about the Titanic, um, a lot of uh, great historical events and, and, and people in history. Uh, all of these books are hardcover. Uh, they come in a small format. They're only six and a half by five inches. Uh, make them great for a collection uh, or a personal library. Uh, also at $6.99, they're very affordable. Uh, the stories are told in a very approachable uh, way with an older sister, Annie, uh, who shares fun historical facts with her younger brother, uh, Nico. This particular book will be coming out in October, and uh, in November of this year, we'll also be releasing our first three-in-one collection for Magical History Tour that'll collect the first, uh, the first three uh, volumes. Uh, January 2024, we'll have book number 14 coming out, and that is called The Gladiators. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jeffrey to introduce you to some of our Mad Cave uh, more adult uh, releases coming up this year. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name's Jeffrey Lapid. Um, just a little bit more about the Mad Cave line. It's our mature readers line of comics and original graphic novels. We recommend them for age 16 and up. Content is a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more mature, much more genre forward, covering everything from action and crime to horror, sci-fi and fantasy. Um, so the first title I'm going to talk about is Don't Spit in the Wind. Um, Don't Spit in the Wind is our thoughtful, speculative environmental fiction mixed with fast-paced action, and it's set in a gritty sci-fi near future. It was inspired by a documentary on the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, and it follows a crew of interplanetary garbage men who've been tasked with cleaning up the abandoned Earth, which is now a planet-sized dump. Uh, this is the U.S. Comics debut of author-illustrator and Bram Stoker Award winner Stefano Cardoselli. He's created a dense, vibrant world filled with plenty of humor packed into all the little details of the art. Very, rem very reminiscent of uh, Jeff Darrow, James Stokoe, uh, and we might even go so far as to say Mobius. Um, this is perfect for people interested in climate sci-fi, environmentalism, fans of movies from Paul Verhoeven, uh, books from Jeff Vandermeer, J.G. Ballard, and Ray, Bra Ray Bradbury. 
uh, let's go on to the next slide, please. Uh, we're going to be talking about Tales of Nottingham here. This is an anthology series that spins out of our best-selling comic book series, Nottingham. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Nottingham is our unique medieval noir take on the old Robin Hood story uh, seen through the eyes of the Sheriff of Nottingham. So in the world of Nottingham, Robin Hood is a murderous terrorist, Maid Marian is a power-hungry schemer, and the Sheriff of Nottingham is a grizzled detective on a mission to end the menace of Robin Hood and his violent gang of merry men. Tales from Nottingham features a fantastic stable of international authors and artists, including Eisner and GLAAD-nominated writer Madeline Visaggio. These creators are bringing in their takes on some of the supporting characters of Nottingham, uh, really digging into the origin stories of fan favorite characters like Friar Tuck and Maid Marian. A uh, new story by the original creators of Nottingham, David Hazan and Shane Connery Volk, uh, is going to be in this volume, and it uh, features events that will lead up to the upcoming volume three of Nottingham, which will be out in 2024. Uh, the very first printing of Tales from Nottingham, number one, sold out completely within a week of its release date. So we're anticipating a lot of excitement over this collection. Um, next slide, please. John Tiffany. Um, after one of his own betrays him, John Tiffany, the world's coolest bounty hunter and a general troublemaker, must stay one step ahead of the world's deadliest assassins as he tries to survive long enough to find out who his real enemy is. John Tiffany is part of our line of Mad Cave original graphic novels. Uh, it's a two-fisted, hard-boiled action thriller with a very tongue-in-cheek sense of humor. Writing, writer uh, Stephen DeBerg calls it his love letter to the international spy thriller genre. Think Ian Fleming meets Donald Westlake, but if Bond or Parker had a more cutting sense of humor. Uh, it's illustrated by Dan Panosian, one of the most prolific artists in comics right now. Dan is uh, an artist who brings a classic pulpy throwback feel to this, the world of this comic. Uh, he draws some very exciting, very tense action scenes, and he manages to hit all the comedic beats perfectly. Uh, John Tiffany is full of classic, uh, common, uh, classic comedic adventure, drama, romance, and mystery, perfect for fans of James Bond, Archer, and Three Days of the Condor. Um, I'm, we've got a little bit of time left, so I'm going to pass it over to Kurt, who is going to talk about two of our releases that will be coming out just in time for Halloween. Thanks, Jeffrey. Next slide, please. Uh, the next title I want to share is uh, Whisper of the Woods. Uh, this is an original graphic novel that we're releasing in October. It is under our Mad Cave imprint, so it's a little bit uh, more mature. Uh, the author, Enen uh, Yurov, is from Romania and actually authored our best-selling Maverick title to date, Needle and Thread. Enen uh, grew up in Romania, having uh, heard of horror stories about the infamous Romanian forest, the Hoya Bashu. The story is based on Romanian folklore that really isn't shared too much outside of Romania. The Hoya Bashu forest has been called the Bermuda Triangle of Romania for all of the unexplained disappearances over the years. And it also uh, is actually located partially in Transylvania, so it's strongly tied to the legend of Dracula. Uh, Kirkus Reviews says that The Whisper of the Woods is a well-illustrated and very satisfying horror tale. It'll be out just in time for Halloween. And uh, will we'll appeal to fans of Coraline and uh, Pan's Labyrinth. This uh, book will also be featured in the August 1st issue of Kirkus Reviews magazine. Uh, and the last, uh, last slide, please, is for Confetti Realms. This is another title that is releasing uh, just before Halloween. Uh, it comes under our Maverick imprint for young adults. Uh, it's a story of a diverse group of teens that decide to, it'd be cool to hang out in a cemetery on Halloween night. And they are transported to another realm where they must collect teeth in order to return home. But some of them have a hard time deciding whether they want to return to the real world. Like most of our Maverick titles, this book has a diverse cast of LBGTQ characters. It deals with uh, young independent kids that have to deal with adversity in order to learn about the, themselves. Uh, the author, Nadia uh, Shamas, is of Palestinian descent. Uh, she resides in Toronto. And she has won a Harvey Award for her work on the HarperCollins book, Squire. Uh, the author says that the idea for this book started with a Victorian Christmas card that she saw during COVID lockdowns, and she says that this work is the most strange and joyous work that she has ever done. Uh, it's a deeply personal work um, that she dreamed, dreamt of uh, to write something so intimately focused on the emotional lives of, of alt-queer kids of color. The art is by Carnessa and has a very Tim Burton-esque feel to it that fits the storyline perfectly. And uh, this book will be coming out September 26th. And that is it from Paper Cuts, Mad Cave, and Maverick. 
Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And a big thank you to all of today's wonderful presenters. <clears throat> Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit www.booklistonline.com webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like those you see here. Recently, ALA's Office for Intellectual Freedom reported 1,269 demands to censor library books and resources in 2022, the highest number of attempted book bans since ALA began compiling data about censorship in libraries more than 20 years ago. Join the Unite Against Book Bans campaign to help protect the freedom to read and to empower readers everywhere. Visit uniteagainstbookbans.org for more information, resources to donate, and more. And remember that you can utilize Booklist to support your library's collection development choices with reviews backed by ALA. We have a special webinar subscription offer. And don't forget that your subscription dollars help ALA advocate on behalf of libraries, assisting those facing an unprecedented number of book challenges. Email us at info at booklistonline.com for more information. Thank you again for joining us for today's webinar. And one more huge thank you to our panelists and to our sponsors, Simon & Schuster, Tundra Books and Imprint, PRH Canada, Yen Press, Holiday House, and Mad Haven Facebook Post. This concludes today's webinar. See you next time.